Consider greatly what everyone has to say, but ultimately your life is yours to live as you choose. Find your own peace in this life, whether it's what others want for you or not. Be good to people. A steady hand makes an artist not, but rather the beautiful mind that rests behind a shaky one. From whence there was what we call time, reflections of creative thought. To now, we have the scholar's mind, and where it fades, spans time. Ooh, wow. All right. This is a message sent to you at sea. We are on the sailing vessel to Vega at coordinates 33, 38, 602 north, 161, 62, 696 west. We are about 700 miles north of the Hawaiian Islands. Live the dream. Do what you want to do in this life. We are only here for a short time. Please contact if found with my email and my name. Yes, I love it. Never base your decisions on money. Some of the best ends of your life will seem horrible to your finances, but humans are very adaptable creatures. You'll find a way to pay for it. Signed, James, with my in contact info. Yeah, so here's our message in a bottle. It's going in the rum bottles. Fitting. This is the uh, Maui rum bottle that we toasted to on our departure. And it's got a really nice glass cork. So let's roll her up and stick her in there. I have heard of someone uh, doing this and someone finding it and contacting them years later. It would be super cool to be contacted. So re remember that. Always put your contact information on that. Let's we'll see if it fits. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to fold it. How are they gonna get it out of there? They'll figure it out. <laughs> That's their problem. <laughs> All right, there's our little message. Cool. Toss it. Shatter something. <laughs> Dude, it's heavy. I think it sunk. No way, really? <laughs> oh shit. It's not floating. <laughs> we all put so much care into that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I <laughs> did not think that through. <laughs> We're going to get a call from a mermaid. <laughs> I've been offered to board a plane bound for Hawaii. Get on a boat I've never seen, with people I've never met, and sail 3,300 nautical miles across the Pacific Ocean. What would you do? The boat in question is a 1984 Mason 63, designed by Alvin Mason in the late 1970s. Mason had, in his early career, worked for John Alden, whose famous designs include the Bristol 35, Fuji 45, and many custom schooners. Having also been the head draftsman for Sparkman Stevens, he took many of the design elements from the yachts he penned over his career and put them into his legacy boat, the Mason 63. The crew includes Mark, the owner of the boat, his daughter Erin, her boyfriend Jake, and my buddy Ryan. Yeah, okay, I know one of them. Needless to say, after 30,000 miles on a catamaran, I was more than a bit intrigued to see how this beautiful yacht would handle herself in the deep blue. Can you reach him? Pull him up. Hook him. Slam that hook into him. Hit him like a bat. There you go. You got him. You got him. Yeah. Now jump on him. Jump on him. Jump on him. Oh! Watch that hook! Yep. Ah, watch that hook! 
get that hook out of here. God. I got hit him with, Hit him with the uh, Where's that? Here, hold him, hold him. Hold him right here. I got him. Here. Oh, dude. Who wants to hit him? Oh, Watch Jake. Out. Watch out. Hold, be careful, be careful. He's got a hook in his leg. Okay, stop, stop, stop. He's dead. Dude. What happened? Jake's got a hook in his leg. Nuh uh. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Bring the pliers over here, Aaron. Dude. Oh, dude. Yeah, just yeah. chop it right here. You gotta push it through. No, no, no. Well, chop that first so that yeah. so, uh, he can be isolated. You can get this thing out. So he can be isolated from. Okay, here we go. Here, you want to do it? Now get your get your thumb right in his oh, gill and hold yeah. his head down. You want to do it yourself? Sure. Uh, fuck, bro. That was bound to happen. Dude. Sorry. I got him. I got him. Okay. Do we have anything that will actually cut through that? Yeah. I want to just pull it out backwards. Yeah, but yeah, you, you, you got to cut the barb off, dude. You got to push it through and cut the barb off. Yeah. Can yeah, you can, you can cut you can cut through that. Yeah. Push it through and cut the barb off. Yeah, I want to come out the other side. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't cut the skin, man. What the? <sighs> oh, got I had it. to. Okay. Let me, let me, oh. Maybe um, get the angle grinder. Don't try to push it back through, bud. No, I, you don't. You don't want to tear up your skin you gotta more. Get the barb off. I pinched the barb down. Yeah, but. Oh. This is like surgical soap. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's hectic trying to gaff a fish on a moving sailboat. I guess any any moving boat like that. But. Yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. You got it, man. It's gonna be tasty. We're gonna make sushi out of this thing for lunch. It's gonna be good. <laughs> I'm gonna make the best sushi you've ever had, just for your leg. <laughs> it might be easier from this side. Go slow though. So it actually comes. Oh, it's coming out! That's what it's supposed to do. Gross! <laughs> oh, sorry. That's What's your gross. favorite color? Does break. that hurt? does it stings pretty damn good <laughs> oh that was gross i've never seen anybody do that before well that's how you kill the dirt inside the room yeah that's stung him. never done that before you know you don't even feel bad for him do you well i've been there done that so been you, there, done that. you're like a, a crazy sadomasochist murderer <laughs> no she's not she's laughing kid. while she's doing it causing pain Kind of rush to the head there. Yeah. <laughs> you almost pass out? Feeling okay? Is the pain subsiding? We'll come back for you, dude. Should probably have some water. <laughs> That's love right there. See that real quick? So I brought this. This is amoxicillin. And Jake has decided that he wants to take antibiotics, right? So, what kinds do you have in your kit? Uh, we have a few different kinds. You can look through it if you want. Maybe we should get all of them out and make a phone call to someone's mom. Maybe your mom. She, she's got your best interest at heart. Or maybe she's biased. You have a life insurance? <laughs> Some medical person. And uh, we'll see which one's the best one to take. should have life insurance. <laughs> <laughs>
changes But you show me life is full of faces Sometimes clouds got in our favorite places But we were young and unaware Think about life on the lean. Life on the lean. It's uh, fine with me. I think it's pretty groovy. Yeah. How about you, Aaron? I think it's rocking. It Are you feels, digging uh, it? It feels crooked, but good. Getting used to it. Yeah, change is good. Well, did mom answer me? I don't know. I totally think it rocks. <laughs> she did not answer me. <laughs> wow. You look 10 years younger, man. Oh, it gets worse. <laughs> It'll get worse. I'm gonna do a nice clean shave. You're if I like do a, a clean shave and leave it raggy up top, I'll just look like a baby. You gonna cut his hair? But if I do a nice can you, like, can you grab your feet and roll on your back? A short trim up top too. Then I look a little older. Yeah. yeah. But. Looking good, man. <laughs> I kind of liked the mountain man look though. Oh yeah. I really liked the stash. <laughs> that was turning me on. <laughs> There's probably a quarter gallon of diesel in the bilge right now. Yeah. In the, you mean in the stringers? Well, it's going to end up in the bilge. Yeah, it'll end up in the bilge. Yeah. So um, we're trying to figure that out. Plus, the refrigeration just went out. So <laughs> that pump needs to be opened up. Maybe the impeller's bad or something. We don't have a spare, so it doesn't really matter. We just need to see if that's the problem or not. So it looks like we've lost refrigeration on day five of 20. We're gonna eat really well for the next three days. <laughs> for sure. Okay, so this manifold is the problem. This is what's leaking. Uh, we've lost probably, I'd say, 70 to 100 ounces of fuel in the bilge. Maybe more that we didn't see yet. But I pumped out at least that much. Whoa. Plus, um, we haven't even looked at the refrigeration yet, but hopefully we found a problem with this. Okay, so I took apart the pump and we tested the impeller part of it. The impeller is a steel impeller, so it works fine and it looks fine. So the pump itself is good, which is a really good thing because we thought if that was a problem, then we're not gonna be able to fix it. So we just gotta figure out why it's not pumping water. Uh, maybe a plug in the lines, maybe a plug in the intake, but at least it's not the pump.
that camera you load down? It wanted to. It wanted to go. It's starting and then it's, it's trying. Not staying yeah. on. Yeah, I know. Well, the generator loaded down too. Okay, now it's going. There it is. Now it's going. There's a couple of watts. No! Well, the pump's been too bad. Is the pump so, yeah, on? I gotta prime it again. You gotta prime it again? Yeah, I think so. Hey, what are you doing? Making some uh, breaded sailfish with turmeric, salt, pepper, a little bit of onion, uh, flour, and garlic. Yeah, yeah, yeah buddy, it's pretty good. <laughs> Don't get too close, you might get hurt. All right, job for today is panel up. This is the AIS transceiver. Didn't even know we had a transceiver, but the AIS just stopped working. So we're trying to figure out how to reset this thing. It's got lights on it. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's got, like, this is power. This is, I'm doing something. This is, something's wrong. And this is antenna. And uh, there's lights on the, I'm doing something and something is wrong little indicator dealies. So we're trying to figure out one, where the hell the book is for this thing, and two, uh, how to reset it and get it working again. It looks like all the cabling is fine, so I'm actually gonna just put it back, and it's gotta be a software thing. It was working the first two days of this trip. We had AIS, and we had Caro Babo on the AIS verified, but the question is, do we really have a transceiver? Can we transmit? Because if we do, that'd be amazing. What you doing? Going through the manuals. My buddy James is a detail-oriented guy. And he wants to know everything about this boat. All right, so this is like the worst book ever for troubleshooting. It's got one page. This is the specs on the next page. And it basically says, check power, uh, check the antenna, check the connections, and then call the support. <laughs> Which, I'm not gonna use my sat phone to call support for this thing. Uh, it was working before, so I'm not sure what's happening. It says that uh, they gave us a CD, so we found this like buried in the boat lockers. This is an old HP laptop with a CD drive, but we can't find the, uh, the power adapter for it but we can't find the power adapter for it. So, if we find the power adapter for this, I guess we can plug that thing in via USB and, tr and try to figure out what's going on with it. Uh, if not, we might just be out AIS, but we might even have a transceiver that we didn't know about. That's cool. Okay, so tell the viewers at home what's happening with the computer. With the computer, the computer is kaputz. We can't read a CD-ROM on this boat anymore. It's obsolete, so. We can't fix our AIS. That's okay. It's all right. It happens. It happens. Do we need AIS? What would you guys do? Would you turn around? We almost got hit by a boat. It was only a 150 footer. Probably would have alarmed on their boat had we had transmitting AIS. I don't know. They might not be able to hurt it with that loud rock and roll music playing. <laughs> How important do you guys think that is? Barry. How about you? Yeah, take it or leave it. Just gotta pay attention. <laughs> I guess that's why we hold I guess that's why we stay on watch. Yep. Those are nice teak storm boards you have there, sir. Aren't they?
Okay, water maker's on. Water's being made. We have 30 gallons per hour. 30 gallons per hour. That's amazing. That's a lot. That's Tobago. There you go. <laughs> Okay, it's night on day six. It's actually just turned into day seven, and uh, it officially is cold now. Um, I'm wearing Fowleys as soon as the sun sets, and I just br busted out the beanie for the first time. Uh, it's it's there's a marine layer that's falling down, and it's getting everything really dewy. So here, the temperature differences are pretty good. Um, we're at 36 degrees north. We're about in line with um, the California-Oregon border, I think. Uh, we were in Monterey this morning, so we should be up near there. Yeah, everything's going good. Tomorrow's day seven, it's officially a week. We've gone about uh, 900 miles, and we're on track to make a three-week journey. Right now, we've just been going north, but the wind is shifting down to the south, so it's almost like it's inviting us to go west, but I, th I don't think we're far enough north yet, so. I'll probably wait until like 42, 44 degrees and then turn. It's really good to be back on the water. And you know what? Life on a monohull boat is pretty good. Pretty good. I'm thinking about maybe, maybe that's my next boat. All right, it's Wednesday, day seven. I wasn't gonna film today because I, I'm taking the day off from filming, but you guys have to see how damn cold it really is now in one day. We're all in Fowleys and sweaters. Check this out. I've got my suit on, my Gumby suit that's red. Not like Gumby, but I can still call it a Gumby suit. Young Jake is in a windbreaker. <laughs> it's kind of like those like felt Puma suits, but like your version. And even Mark is wearing a sweater. The cold-blooded Mark's even in a sweater. He's still wearing shorts though. He refuses to... <laughs> And Erin's down there in her, in her get-up. She's got a beanie on like I do. It's cold, people, and I think it's going to be cold until we get to San Francisco. So, get used to seeing me in this outfit. I kind of like this outfit. Makes me feel like a, a big man. <laughs> feel safe from the rain. Look at outside, it's uh, One last thing. The AIS is working now. I gave Ryan the credit for that. Neither one of us has anything to do with it. It just started working again. And uh, we have one contact on AIS that's gonna hit us in about three hours. Come check it out. See that guy? That guy's about 60 miles from us doing 16 knots. On a collision course. So we'll see if he's real. A real threat. Maybe. Okay, à tout à l'heure. It's morning day eight. If you can hear that noise, that's one of the things I don't like about this boat. 
I've got a one-way valve for the generator. And it's right next to my head. It's literally, literally right here, right, right in that corner up there. This is the through hole for the exhaust. And it's got a little ball valve in it, so you can't take a wave and get water into the generator. It's a good idea, but the thing about this boat is that it's not autonomous. It's you have to run the generator twice a day for an hour, and at six in the morning. Some solar panels would fix that. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning, and how was watch last night? I was up early for watch, helping with the fog, that's about it. Otherwise, I think everything went smoothly. Uh, it's really foggy here and has been for the last three days, maybe two days. Uh, so we're having double watches when the fog is at its thickest because you can't see more than 100 feet. Uh, just listening, one person on each side listening and looking out and uh, being as careful as we can. We lost our AIS again, so we don't have AIS, which sucks. And our radar is popping the breaker, so we don't have radar either. We're kind of flying blind without AIS and radar, so we're being extra vigilant on watch. The temperature is probably around 60s, mid 60s right now. Uh, it gets down pretty, maybe low 60s at night, high 50s, I don't know. What do you think? It's probably hitting the 50s. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be like this for very much longer. It looks like we can finally start making some easterly progress. So we've been on this course for eight days, uh, either straight north or north-northwest. And now we're starting to put a little bit of easterly progress into it. So we're starting to go towards mainland states. I'm downloading another weather forecast right now and it looks to me like we can start turning in another day, day and a half, like maybe 250 miles. Uh, we can start making some progress to the east and we might be able to actually sail all the way. Uh, usually there's a, big, there's a big section of the ocean here that just doesn't have any wind. And uh, every once in a while, just the way that the wind patterns roll, when they're changing, there's wind that goes through that. So it looks like we might be able to time it so we can just follow that wind and uh, not have to motor, which would be super cool. Because motoring for you know 48 hours sucks. So one thing to report last night, we broke a, mat a batten car uh, trying to put the reef in the main and Right here is the car, and it is on the batten, so we don't, that's the last one. So we now we just lost the single reef on the main and the full main. So we have to leave it double reefed because we don't have a, a batten car, a spare. Uh, they're different than the regular cars. Every time there's a batten, there's, a, there's just a different type of car. So unless you have a spare batten car and a spare regular car for these Hark and Track systems, you are screwed if one breaks. And this one just exploded, bearings went everywhere, <laughs> just rain bearings. I have a couple of them actually, but yeah, that's it. All right, still day eight. <clears throat> Today's job is figuring out the AIS because it's really, really foggy now and uh, we want it to make sure we don't get run over at night. So uh, we're talking with the guy that installed it and he's talking to us over this thing, which is a DeLorem. Uh, those things are cool. You can have unlimited messaging for like 50 bucks a month. Satellite through the satellite. Uh, it's not a phone, but it is an SOS. And uh, he is saying that it could be either power, which we know it's not, uh, the antenna, a problem with the antenna, or a problem with the GPS fix. That unit gets its GPS data from the Master Nema bus, which is on the Raymarine bus. That's coming in fine on the rest of the system, so we're kind of going to default and say that that's fine on this system. So it's probably the antenna cable for the GP, uh, for the VHF. So Mark is pulling off the base plate under the mast to check the connection point. This thing got wet and swollen it up, huh? Yeah, it did. So this is probably the problem. It looks like whoever connected this cable 
This is the one coming from the boat. This is the one coming from the mast. And they just put them together, soldered them, and then wrapped this stuff on the outside and then put electrical tape over it, which is the, I think the worst connector I've ever seen for a VHF. Yeah, me too. I've never seen an antenna wire done that way. That's just shit work. Um, probably not your electronics guy. I bet you an owner did this and the electronics guy just didn't check it. No, he did it, but he was running out of time and he was doing his side job, so pretty bad. I would have waited a day. So what we need to do is strip this all the way back and strip this all the way back, twist these together, solder them, yep. and then twist these together, have them down, and so it'll be like this with, right. with the um, but you'll um, have a connection. ground down and the hot up and then we can put a piece of shrink wrap over it, put right. some silicone over it, and then shrink it. And then as soon as you get into port, you uh, put actual connectors on it right. and do it the right way. This should be a connection. Right. 10-4. So, let's fix it. Okay. We need to get some tools. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the AIS worked for like 10 minutes. We were like, yeah! <laughs> and uh, now we're trying to figure out why. So it's some intermittent problem, which is always the, pro the hardest thing to fix in electronics. So Mark has some dielectric grease and he's gonna grease the back of the pins that go to the master unit. Let's see what happens. It's not turning on. It's not turning on, Mark. What'd you do? Crap. Oh, there it goes. I am I'm almost to the point where I'm going to give up on this thing because I, I have no idea what the f*** is going on. It's very frustrating. Maybe just today. Maybe we start a new tomorrow. Okay, not sure if this is going to work because of the wind, but this is a cool shot. We are making water. It's day nine. nine. Yeah, it's the nicest day we've had in a few days. and. It's brisk and cold and sunny and the water is really cold. We're making really cold water with the water maker. Big news for today, we just made our first turn towards the mainland. Woohoo! Yeah! We're at 020, which we're making about 025, 030 good. And we're trying to now go around this big dead zone gyre thing and then sail all the way to San Francisco. So that's the goal. And we're all super excited. We're finally turning. We're, we're, we were ready to do this for like the last four days. We're going to hit Alaska for Christ's sake. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going up to like Vancouver Island territory. Other big news. We found the anti seasickness glasses. I'm putting croquis on. Put them on. <laughs> you got to get in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Does it work? I don't know. I've only had them on for three seconds. <laughs> okay, I need you to leave those on for the rest of the day. Well, I have to take my patch off. Oh, no. Really oh, you can't experiment. have both. Don't do both. I have both. Okay. They're looking good. Looking styling. Thanks. I want a pair of those. Everybody should have some. <laughs> so, AIS is working. We have a contact, but the box of the AIS transceiver says it's still faulted. Imagine how frustrating this is for us. <laughs> but it's working now, so I mean, I guess we'll leave it until tomorrow when it stops working again. This is ridiculous, man. Japanese fishing buoys. I've, I've actually collected some of those off the beach, but yeah, that, that one's old. That's been here a long time. Do you see the growth on that thing? It was like this big. Yeah.